Welcome to Chapter 6 of the Adkio Web Interface. This time, we are going to see the calendars, scheduled events, and periodic events. To see the calendars, we will go to the Programming menu option, Calendars. We are going to create a new calendar, we don't have any at the moment. To do this, we will click the plus button. To create a calendar, we must give it a name, and of course, it must be a name that does not already exist. So, let's give an example. As you can see, the name does not respect the rules, because, it cannot have spaces. Now it does. Calendars can have a parent calendar in turn, a typical example of a parent calendar, it could be that, we define a calendar with the working days of the company, and then define calendars, for example, one for heating, another for heating, lighting, and, that they all depend on this calendar of business days of the company. In this way, here we can decide which days the company is open, for example, that it does not open on Saturdays, on Sundays, and that it is open all month. And here, we could put exclusions, for example, the Christmas holidays, the official holidays of each region, ok? The next two fields are important, since they tell us from which days this calendar applies, and until which day this calendar is applicable. In the event that, we want it to have a beginning and an end. We may not use this, if we want the calendar to be perpetual, to always run. As in the lower part, we can include exceptions to this calendar. Although here, we have said that we work every month, and every day of the week, for example. We could indicate an exception that on the 25th of month 12 of all years. Because we do not put years, the day we will not work. What can happen? As you know, there are holidays in each year that vary in date, depending on the days of the week, and so on. So, those holidays, if we should put them here with their year because they will not be repeatable in each year. On the other hand, on holidays of this type, which are completely fixed, if we can enter them as perpetual inclusions, it would be to do just the opposite. Here, we have said that, we do not work on Saturdays, but maybe, if we are a store, then if we open on King's Day, for example, which is a holiday, okay? So, we could add it in the same way. Finally, we are going to see the rules, that calendars follow to know whether, or not a specific day belongs to this calendar, and meets all these rules. They are evaluated by six criteria, and they are the following. If the day meets an inclusion, the day belongs. That is, if the day is specifically indicated here, the day belongs. If the day is before the beginning, or after the end, the day does not belong. That is, if the day is before the date, that we configure here, or it is after the date that we confirm here, obviously, the day does not belong to the calendar. If there is a parent calendar, and the day does not belong to the parent calendar, the day does not belong to this calendar. Logically, if this calendar depends on a parent calendar, if the day, applying the same criteria that, we are commenting on, does not belong to this calendar, since this is a descendant of it, logically, the day will no longer belong to this calendar, according to, if the day or month of the date, we are evaluating is not in the list of days of the week, or months, it does not belong. Obviously, if we are evaluating, and the day is a Sunday, and here Sundays are unmarked, or it is February, and February is not marked, then, logically, it does not belong on the calendar. If the day meets any exclusion, the day does not belong. Obviously, also if we have excluded days here, the day will not belong to the calendar because it is expressly excluded. And, if none of these previous rules that we have mentioned are met, the day DOs belong, ok? All these rules can be found in the user manual that is integrated in all adkios, in the help section, ok, up here. Ok, well, with this, we have seen the calendars option. To configure the scheduled events, we will go to Schedule scheduled events. As we can see, we do not have any, we press the plus button, and in this example, we are going to call it weather programming. We are going to tell you that, it corresponds to the store opening calendar, and then, we will see, 
how this option of specifying time works in Chrome mode. We are going to tell him, suppose the store opens at 10 in the morning, we are going to tell him that at 9 in the morning, we are not going to put seconds, because we do not need so much precision. And now, if we do not put the day of the month, or month or year, this would serve, so that, every day at 9 in the morning, the event that we are going to schedule happens, but every day at 9 in the morning of this calendar, as you will remember, it was from Monday to Friday, every month of the year, and we had exceptions, as for example, we had done on December 25th. If we wanted to put days of the week, in this case, we could do it, but remember, that in the calendar, we had already indicated the days of the week in particular, which was from Monday to Friday. They are evaluated by six criteria, and they are the following. So, in this case, we are not going to do it. Even so, here we see that, it indicates that 1 corresponds to Monday, and 7 to Sunday. So, if we wanted, because we do not have this configured in the calendar, indicate the days from Monday to Friday, we would put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Duration of the event. If we know that, the store opens 12 hours a day, for example, from 10 in the morning to 10 at night, we would like the air to turn off at 10 at night. Therefore, if this started at 9, here we would put 13, and instead of seconds, we would select hours, ok? And shoot on reboot, this is interesting too. It is used for cases, in which, due to a power outage, this programming could be truncated. We want to say that, if this weather programming started at 9 in the morning, if at 11 in the morning, we have a power cut, when Adkia receives power again, what should it do? Well, here we select it. Make this calendar event skip whenever, or when the state has changed. We are going to tell him, in this case that, we want him to always jump, because we always want him to check, if it is after 9 in the morning, and if 13 hours have passed. If we are within these 13 hours of operation after the start time. If so, he will consider that this option should be working. Therefore he will activate it again on that system reboot. Finally, the option when the status has changed is used so that if we select them, Adkio checks if this event should have started during the blackout. It means that, imagine that the blackout was from 8 in the morning to 10 in the morning, and when it starts, we want Adkio to check if in that period from 8 to 10 this event should have jumped. How is it going to get the answer that yes, because right at 9 o'clock, which is an intermediate hour of that blackout, this should have turned on, it means that at 10 o'clock, when we have a new power supply, he sees that, this event should have started, and it is not, so therefore, it will rip it off. We are going to erase this one that, we already have in the previous calendar. Let's see now, how the option to specify time works in Chrome mode. As we can see, the interface simplifies a lot, and this is where we must specify the Chrome string. Chrome, as it says here, is a way to schedule tasks in the GNU Linux and Unix operating systems. It is a very short and very efficient way of scheduling tasks. Let's see how it is done. The first thing we have to say is that this programming is cron type, but not exactly the same. Since we include seconds and cron, the original system does not include them. So, the first thing Adkio is going to evaluate is whether the string we write here has five or six blocks of text. If, they have six blocks of text, it will determine that the first is the second. If, it is five or less, it is going to assume that we are not indicating seconds. So, we are going to tell you what we want. The first thing, in the second zero, the second block is the minutes. Well, let's imagine that, we are going to do the same previous programming at nine o'clock. Well, then it would also be zero the minute zero of the hour. Next, is the time, because we wanted nine in the morning. Next, are the days of the month. We could indicate, between commas, what specific days, we want, or we could indicate an asterisk, if we want any day of the month, because effectively, we know that this belongs to a parent calendar, and we have already specified it, in that calendar. Next, we can indicate the number of the month. Here, we could indicate that, we want it to be, only in January, putting a 1, or we can indicate the months in English, or with their abbreviations. So, we could put Jan, if we want January. In any case, we could indicate 1, 2, 3, 4, January, February, March, and April, okay? 
always without spaces. Well, as in this case, we want it to run in any month, because we have a parent calendar that already indicates it, an asterisk to run in any month, and then, we will indicate the day of the week. Knowing that, 0 corresponds to Monday, and 7 corresponds to Sunday. Since we want them to run every day of the week, we would put an asterisk, because our parent calendar already tells us, what those days are. But, if we want it to run every Monday, we would put a 0, or if we want it to run every Sunday, we could put a 7, ok? In this case, we are going to put an asterisk. If, we give it to save, whenever we come to consult this calendar, the cron mode will show us. So, we have to take into account that, the people, who are going to read this understand it, although as I always tell you that, the explanation of how the cron mode works, you also have it perfectly explained in the manual included in Adgyo. You can look for it, and see perfectly, how it works. In this case, we don't want to save it in cron mode, we want to save it in normal calendar mode, so we're going to cancel. Let's see, how it looks, 9 o'clock. We have not specified anything, therefore, it is for every day of the week, but always respecting its parent calendar, and the cron mode is not specified, because, we have left without saving, right? With this then, we have just seen, how to do programming, both the cron mode, and the manual mode, normal mode. And we have seen, how the option to fire at the beginning works, then, we have finished seeing the option of scheduled events. But, do not go yet, because we have one more thing to see, and that is how we associate programming with these events. Logically, we have already seen, how to program startups and shutdowns, but where do we program this, since we have here the option to manage scripts. We are going to tell it that, we want to manage a new script associated with this scheduled event, and a text editor opens for us to write. Although, we will see all the programming of any type of events in the next block of chapters, we will simply see what this is composed of. We must give a name, let's call it on-off climate, for example. Well, and we are going to see that, we have three text blocks, one called initialization, which already tells us here, which is used to initialize variables that, we are going to use later. And, we have two other blocks that are very important. They are the start of the scheduled event, that is, what we want to be executed, when the calendar starts, when it goes into operation. We can write a piece of code here, and we have another that is the end schedule event the same, but that is, when that calendar event ends. So, in our example, here we would put all the code to send the startup messages, to the climate machines, in whatever mode they are in, and here we could put the code to turn off the climate machines, ok? We will see that, we have the save button here, the debug button, which we will see in depth, when we see the programming. And in this case, we are going to cancel, because we are not going to program anything, and now we are done. Finally, we are going to see the option of periodic events. To do this, we will go to programming. Periodic events. We are going to give the plus, and, as we can see, this is the simplest option of the three that, we have seen. We are simply going to give it a name, let's imagine that, we are going to create an event to check, if an air exchanger filter is dirty. Let's call it, check filter. As always, no spaces and no accent. Very good, and we are simply going to tell you, how often we want this to jump. Well, let's say that, we want to check the status of the filter every 15 minutes. We have days, hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds, ok? Every 15 minutes, we are going to say that, we wanted Kyo to do a check. In this case, for example, we could check the pressure difference between before and after a filter of a heat recovery unit, for example, ok? So, the programming that, we cannot do are event oriented, because obvious, sly, there is no event that allows us to make this check. Tay filter does not have a sensor that tells us that it is dirty, and therefore, warn or launch an alarm. So, what we are going to do, in these cases is every time, we consider appropriate, we will carry out the verification. So, this generates that event that we were missing, that we would not have to do that type of checks. In this case, we have decided that, we want to check the filter status every 15 minutes, we can put every hour, every day, and so on. Well, just name, and how often we want it to be checked or run. 
we save, and we already have it here. As in the previous case, we have here its script. We are going to create a new one. And we could also call it, filter check. As before, we have a section to initialize variables, which we will see later, and in this case, we have a single block of code, since we are going to do a check. In this case, we would read the pressure variable, before the filter, pressure after the filter, we would make a subtraction, and if we have our variable set outside, for example, that tells us, what is the pressure difference with which, we want to consider that the filter is dirty, or we want to launch an alarm, we would check, if that value is higher or not than the preset. Very well, anyway we will see all this, as I have already told you in depth, in the second block of chapters of this course. Great, because we have finished watching the periodic events, and with this, we have finished today's chapter. See you at the next one.